Hi Capricorn, welcome to Starkeology Tarot. I am Desi, I will be your Starkeologist this evening, and by evening I mean just right now whenever you're watching this. We're about to dive into your May tarot reading, um, and uh, I'm, gonna about, I'm about to share with you the messages um, straight from spirit that will best align you with your highest self, your highest path, um, your highest good. Um, I hope some of this is resonant. If it's not, there are things that are not resonant in this. Do not freak out. Everyone remain calm. Those messages, messages are just meant for some other Capricorn. Um, I also encourage you to watch the video for your rising sign, your moon sign, your Venus sign, um, especially if you're interested in getting specific insight on those areas of, our, of your life. We are all precious snowflakes, um, truly individuals. So um, we are a culmination of all of these uh, different parts of ourselves. So to get a more specific, precise uh, reading of you, please watch uh, other videos. Um, let's start. Capricorn, what world are you leaving behind? Um, this is in the Wild Unknown deck, the Six of Swords, plus the Page of Pentacles. We're starting out. That is what is kicking off your May. And um, that Six of Swords is, is what I typically refer to as the Refugee card. In this Wild Unknown deck, though, it's the the... The art makes me think of it in a in a slightly different way. Not as much, um, it's not as much of an escape to a new world as it is the destruction of an old world and the building of a new world. Um, letting the things in shadow fall away and then stepping into this the light of the rainbow that, that comes naturally after that stage of darkness, after that rainstorm. Um, there is, whatever it is, it's, you really are, you, you're in the process of leaving something behind, or perhaps you already have left something behind. The main feeling that is kicking off your May is this feeling of hope as you move towards the thing that is new, as you recover from the difficult times that you've been through. Um, this is, this is like... This card means that hope is on the horizon, things will get better, and it is important that you you rest and you revitalize yourself, you, you allow yourself the physical space to, um, to recover, to heal and recover from the mental, emotional, spiritual departure that you just experienced or battle that you just experienced or that you are going through. This is a time to really take care of yourself and nurture yourself. Paired with the Page of Pentacles, um, yeah, you need, you need that physical space. You need that physical rest and rejuvenation. Page of Pentacles is like saying Earth of Earth. This is the most, this is the card for building a very strong, grounded foundation in your real world, in, in your reality, with the, um, with your material world, with your material home, with your things, the things that you have in your life that make you feel cared for, um, taken care of, and also abundant. The Page of Pentacles is like the op the very opposite also of a scarcity mindset. This is not a time for you to be worrying about not having enough. Um, there is a you either starting me with a real trust that your needs will be met, and maybe that is coming from this hope that's coming with the the Six of of Swords card. This this newfound hope. This 
this vision for the future, for your new life, for the new world that you are in the process of building. Um, but yeah, if, if you aren't naturally feeling the trust that your needs will be met, then this is a call for you to, to devote yourself to that new trust. This could be a huge mindset shift for some of you. Um, because this is swords, it's like the, the mindset that you are leaving behind is the scarcity mindset. That is, that is an old world mindset for you. And the mindset that you are stepping into is that you have all the resources that you need to support yourself, to create a really strong foundation in something real. Um, now is a time to begin to begin. It's, it's a beginning moment. And this, this can be signifying good news in work, your job, um, some sort of business opportunity, some sort of opportunity that just makes you feel more stable and secure in life. It's practical. It's trustworthy. You can put your trust in it. Um, but but being the page, it's it's you are there. There's an element. Some of you are becoming students again. You're in the position of learning, of learning something new, of learning a new skill, learning a new trade, a craft, whatever it is. It is creating. There is great opportunity in it to create a very strong foundation, a very strong sense of security, and with it comes this trust that your needs will be met. This trust that that abundance is all around you the pentacles cards also being being the earth the suit of earth this has to do also just with your your relationship with the earth itself um with your relationship with the material world with resources with mother earth's resources we don't think of things often as mother earth's resources we think of we think of the things that we own the possessions that we own as coming from you know, any anywhere from a factory to a, um, you know, some sort of handmade Etsy shop <laughs> or something like that. That's how we, th you know, that's that's the the range of um, of sources for the things that we own. But when we take an even a, a step backwards and we look at that from an, a wider perspective we have to come to terms with the fact that everything still comes from this earth everything is coming from the very real resources around us and the way that we interact with our materials with our possessions with our objects our things that that reflects the way that we refl that we interact our relationship with mother earth with with um the physical world with the resources that we are naturally given how are you making use of those resources in a very literal way but also just the resources that you have now to make you feel stable and secure what is your relationship with the with that what resources do you have now is a time to take stock of those resources um and use it to to kind of Pave a new path going forward. Pave a new path. Um, pave a new path towards the abundance that you that you would like. Toward that you know, towards that new job, towards that new business, towards that new home, um, towards that new relationship with money, towards those new that that new mindset about money. So this, I mean, May starts out looking very, very, I think, incredibly optimistic. Incredibly optimistic. Incredibly hopeful. You are seeing the rainbow now. The rainbow has come out after the rain. And with it is coming, is presenting this beautiful, grounded, real opportunity that you can hold in your hands. This isn't an illusion. This is something very real. This is something that will manifest in a very real way and maybe even in a, in a monetary way for you. Um, the advice here as you embark on this, as you start building, rebuilding um, this new foundation, The advice here, we have the Ten of Swords plus the Ace of Wands. You guys had the Ten of Swords 
in your last reading, didn't you? For for April, it ended with with a ten of swords. Something, something huge ending for you. It was a real mindset shift, a real mindset ending. And I think um, coming up here in the advice position, the action that you should take position. Um, I think the way that you really fan this hope, that you honor this uh, this new refuge that you're finding in this new mindset or this new op job opportunity, whatever whatever is offering you this refuge, whatever is offering this this new world, the rebuilding of this new world for you. Um, I think that a crucial part of leaning into that and saying yes to that is by letting whatever has ended right before this truly end. Don't bring this with you to this new world. Don't bring this with you into this the building of this new foundation. Your story, this negative story, this negative loop, this narrative that you may tell yourself, it has no place in the building of this new foundation. And if you use it to build this new foundation, the foundation will be weak. So do not use this as a building material for that new foundation. Let whatever needs to die, die. Let this ending be a real ending, not, not a pause. Not something that you'll come back to and, and save for later and then, you know, when you're in a dark place or you're feeling sorry for yourself, you revisit the melodrama of this ending. Don't ever, you don't ever have to revisit the melodrama of this ending again. In fact, you can um, repurpose it and see it through a new lens that actually benefits you rather than keeps you in some narrative that, that limits you. The Ten of Swords, I also think that this is, this is showing that you are, the way to say yes to this new hope, to the rebuilding of this new world, to say yes to this opportunity and act on it, to, to let this be a real beginning for you, to become a student again, to go, to learn how to move forward, to learn how to build something strong here. Um, Part of that requires you to, to kind of delve deep into meditating and thinking about why and how things ended, how this ended, and what there is to learn from this ending. There is a mental reflection that goes on here with the Ten of Swords because this is a Swords card, and, and it could be the ending, whatever did end, it could be an ending of all different kinds. It was a culminate, a natural culmination of events. But there's also a shock element to it. This person is stabbed in the back by 10 swords. I mean, some of you, I think, are feeling a sense of betrayal, a sense of being cheated, and a real sense of drama too. Like, was this necessary? Did things have to get this far? Did, did, I, did this have to have, you know, did I have to be stabbed in the back 10 times? You know, one one sword would do would be enough, but um, this is really the repetitive repetitiveness of this card, the redundancy of you know of those ten swords lined up is like it's to say that this is really done. What's done is done. There is no turning back. There is no hope for resurrection of this whatever it was. I think for many of you, this also is specifically the ending of a mental process, of a belief system that truth has has now revealed to be false. Um, it's a blessing in disguise. If it doesn't, if it feels painful, if you are feeling the grief of it right now, that is valid, and you have to feel that pain, you have to feel that grief, but also know that when you get through the processing of those very valid emotions, when you heal from the pain of it, 
you'll come out of it feeling much stronger, much more stable, with so much more space to build something much more stable and secure and real. It is a blessing in disguise. And it is the looking back on this ending, whatever ended, whatever rainstorm was before this rainbow, it is the looking back on it and reframing it, retelling the story, rewriting the story, rewriting the narrative of it in a way that supports you and empowers you instead of limits you, instead of a story that focuses on the suffering, instead of a story that glamorizes your victimhood or your pain. That story is the story that has no place in the building of this new foundation for you. That, is a, that will create a weak foundation. Don't use that as a, material, as a building material. That is not a resource. That is not a resource for you. Make your resources be of a noble nature. What you build yourself up with, make those materials noble and reliable in nature. You, with this being swords, you are becoming aware of the ways different thoughts, words, belief systems have, have been like holes in your foundation in the past. They've been holes in the bottom of your boat in the past. So why would you ever use those materials again to build your boat? Why would you ever use those materials again to build the... Um, infrastructure of your tower. There is no turning back with this ending. And that is a very, very positive thing. It's making room for Ace of Wands here, real Ace of Wands energy. Um, processing the ending of this, reframing the, the ending in a way that supports you, rewriting the story of this ending, of this dramatic ending in a way that empowers you and strengthens you, makes room for inspiration, direction, that is so powerful and clear to you, it feels like it's coming from outside of yourself. It feels like it is coming from God. It feels like it is, it is inspiration. It is a force. It is life force that is pulling you towards the thing that will fulfill you the most, that will align you most with your higher purpose, your highest self. Um, that wands energy... That Ace of Wands, um, when all of these mental structures, when all the focus on the melodrama, the victimhood, the drama of the ending, the drama of the end of this war, when all of that is processed, reframed, and then allowed to be let go of, then you make space in your life for real creative inspiration, for real spiritual inspiration, for real spiritual growth. You just don't have the space for that if your brain is too busy. If your brain is too busy telling you stories, telling you narratives, repeating narratives that um, take up a lot of energy and a lot of investment, emotional investment that is usually painful on your part. You don't need to be investing that anymore. Make space for this Ace of Wands. This is an awakening to your inner resources that will match your outer ones. Nothing appears in our outer world without appearing in our inner vision first. This is in your outcome position, the Two of Wands. You have this Ace of Wands in the advice and the outcome is Two of Wands. That is a natural progression of events, a natural progression of the creative ins process of inspiration, the process of awakening, of inner awakening. And you are on that path now. 
I think some of you have been hoping for this. This is the hope that you have had. Some of you have been feeling a real calling for this, a real need to, to be awakened to a new level of consciousness in your life, a deeper level of consciousness in your life. And that is what is happening in May for you. Wands, that is, that is an awakening to your inner resources, to inspiration. It's the kindling of desire, of the need to create. It's kundalini energy. It's, it's what we refer to as prana in yoga or um, ki. I think it's ki, chi, in, uh, in Chinese medicine. Someone correct me if you know. Um, but it is that soul energy. It's that life force that flows through you. You are an instrument of conduction for that life source. You are a conductor of that life force. And you are here for a reason, to conduct that pure life force. And when that life force um, is blocked in some way, it usually gets blocked by unresolved feelings, unresolved thoughts, feelings that hold us back, thoughts that hold us back. A, a muddy heart or a muddy mind. This is clearing the path for you so that you can be this free flowing conductor of this life force energy, meaning you are a tool of the universe. You are, you are an open vessel to, to create your most inspired work. And that doesn't need to necessarily be artistic. Some of the greatest creations humans do in their time on this planet is the creation of another human being. So the key is, is, is whatever it is for you is getting in touch with that and honoring that. And you know that by what it is you desire, what you feel so called to do. That is the, the, the compass. That is what directs you. That is what lets you know what that life purpose is for you, what your dharma is here. And when you listen to that, when you follow that, when you answer that call, you are opening yourself up to inspiration, to divine inspiration, inspiration that is so much greater than you, creative power that is so much greater than you. You become unblocked in a way that you are just this force. You are pure life force. And you are able then to do some of your greatest, to achieve your greatest achievements, to accomplish your greatest accomplishments. That is what is in store for you here. Saying yes to that Ace of Wands wake up call. The sun is dawning on a new consciousness in you. And this is, an, this is a process of illumination. This is illuminating for you. Your something, another key, another component to your purpose here, to your calling here, to your, your divine path here. Not just the thing that you are doing to pay bills or the routine that you are going through every day because it's just the routine that you go through every day. This is, this is awakening you to a deeper consciousness and illuminating really deep truth, inner truth, inner knowing, inner wisdom. If you feel um, a bit wild during this time, like it's uncontrolled, like you have this desire, this longing, and it, you feel compelled to do things that feel out of character or feel wild, I think is really is the word. Don't be afraid of that. You're doing it right. Ace of Wands is not this ace of wands energy is a spark of creation there is not thought that goes into it there this is not a time for for strategizing how this is going to work for you or really like working through the the why of it well why am i feeling the need to do this don't question anything at this point just make space for it to exist and say yes to it if you feel called to do something to act on it act on it because it's the acting on it that will then provide the answer after of why it was important to do it this is leading you 
as I already briefly talked about, Two of Wands plus Mother of Swords. So Two of Wands, I mean, you, by the end of May, you, your outcome here, you are envisioning a new life for yourself. This new world you are, are building, you are fleshing out the details of that new world. He's holding a world in literally in the palm of his hand. This is the visualization stage. This is this is the stage where you have you take you allow yourself you give yourself the gift of having the biggest, widest, most far back perspective of what is possible for you of the life that you want to have. That is a gift that you give yourself. The pitfall here is visualizing within someone else's boundaries, within someone else's dream, with, within someone else's definition of what is possible and what is not. Be aware of that with you. Don't visualize this within someone else's or through someone else's lens. Let this Ace of Wands carry you past what you can have ever considered to be rational, past how you define logical. Let this Ace of Wands, this life force, redefine for you what is possible. You are redefining your world right now. You are rewriting your stories, the narratives that make up the building blocks of your life. You have to see the world that you want within you first before you ever see it appear outside of you. So be devoted to that vision. Be um, committed to practicing the visualization of that vision. Dwell on your vision. This is a time, come out of May, by the end of May, you should be dreaming constantly. You should make a practice of dreaming. And it is this very practice of dreaming, of letting this life force energy be your driving force for a little while, letting that desire in you, that, that soul desire, that longing, that wild, that wildness, take the wheel for a while and kick your brain out of the driver's seat because your brain can only get you so far and in this endeavor in this new endeavor the building of this new of this new life for you um however that takes shape whether it is a new job it is a new career it is a passion project that you are finally saying yes to it is first steps towards a dream that you have held in your heart for a long time and you are finally taking those first steps whatever it is thinking at this stage is not going to serve you it is just the action that you take on dreaming the the non Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing, sorry, it's a little muddy. I'm hearing that the action, whatever your soul inspires you to do, do it without question. Don't have a mental argument with it. It's nothing that, this action is nothing that requires thought at this point. It's nothing that requires critical thinking. It requires faith. It requires a leap of faith on your part. And it requires losing yourself in that, that divine process of, of creating. You're not, when we, when we really are, are creating something, when we really are inspired, our brain goes out the window, at least our critical brain, our egoic mind goes out the window. We don't question anything. Our brain suddenly just becomes a tool that we are using effortlessly to fulfill a certain desire, to fulfill a certain action, to bring about a vision that we see, create that vision. And it's like, it's just that it's like in the flow that, that what it means to be in flow, what it means to be in the zone. When you are in the zone, that allow yourself to just be there and exist and act there without thinking about it. 
that is rewriting by honoring that part of you, by honoring that life force in, in the driver's seat for a little bit in May. That is rewriting, actually, the way that your logical mind does work. Mother of Swords, this is Queen of Swords, this is Water of Air. So this is bringing a creative flow, an intuitive flow, to your thought process that maybe has been far too structured, contained, and linear up until this point. Thought does not have to be that linear. Yes, our brains can offer logic, they can offer structure where we need it, but they also can be allowed to flow freely, to have more of that feminine side to balance out the masculine. Um, let that right brain split power with the left brain. And this is making you a little more right brain than left brain by honoring this this life force in you, this soul purpose, this drive that that you that this ace of wands is bringing to you in May. Um, this is a real opportunity to to gain um, authority really over your mental processes to gain mental clarity that is that also honors your inherent creativity and intuition and the free flowingness of that the chaos of that the natural chaos of that chaos is not always an indicator of something bad <laughs> there is a natural balance between chaos and order and um There's a little madness. There's a, a little more madness to your brilliance than you, than to, a little more madness to your brilliance in you than you think. You can be embracing more of that madness. That, that's that feminine wild, that feminine wildness. Um, a little madness isn't bad. <laughs> And that is helping, that is going hand in hand with how you visualize, how you envision this new world for you, this future. Um, and I see that making decisions for you, moving, moving forward too, making some big decisions for you that will set the foundation for, for your future, for your job, your finances, your home. Um, So Capricorn, this is really exciting, and I know that it, it maybe feels a little against the grain for you to, to acknowledge and, and or honor that fire in you and not shy away from it or not be afraid of it or not feel an impulse to immediately dampen it a little bit. You don't, you know, you're afraid of maybe being too, too fiery. And this is a time where your fire is fueling you. Your fire can fuel the rocket ship that is you. It can it can push you into space. It can push you to new heights that you didn't think were possible. If you just fan the flame a little instead of dampening it, instead of keeping it controlled and safe, you know, within the fireplace. <laughs> Let it let it take its natural course a little bit. I hope this is helpful. Um, I really loved giving this reading for you guys. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, I also ask if you if you are really digging Starchaeology Tarot to share this channel with anyone who you think would appreciate it, anyone who you know um, might especially need a little extra support and love during this time and encouragement. That's what I'm here for, and um, it's a real honor to to be doing that for you. I am so grateful for your support. Please comment below um, if you'd like to tell share it 
the juicy details of what is happening in your life right now, what this um, this page of pentacles opportunity is, what this ten of swords ending is for you, and and what is that ace of wands fire that you're feeling in yourself? What is the thing that nagging that nagging fire that it's it's time to really fan the flame of? Um, please comment. I would love to hear your feedback and and know specifically what's going on. Um, for you. It makes me really happy to, to learn about your life. Thank you so much. I love you. Literally, I, I love you. I know I don't know some of you, maybe some of you I do, but I love you. Good day.